Hi, my name is Laquanda Jefferson. Welcome to Familial Bond Psychotherapy and Consultation Services delivery of the December broadcast. Myself, Dr. Laquanda Jefferson. Um, I'm a psychotherapy facilitation specialist, basically. Um, my specialty is marriages and families, um, marriage and family therapy. I am a master's level clinician on that level. Currently not considering licensing here in the state of Georgia. My practice, which is Familiar Bonds, is located here in Atlanta. And I focus on a holistic piece of wellness in general. This month's broadcast is going to be focused around mental and emotional health matters. So let's just delve right into the presentation piece, okay? Just so I can make sure I don't forget to mention it, I do not own rights to any of the music that you may hear in the background. <clears throat> Um, so again, I want to define mental health and the facet in which we use it here and um, we reference it during this presentation. Mental health, definitively speaking, is a positive state of psychological functioning. Some of the areas which encompass your overall mental health are your socio-environmental factors <clears throat> when they're in a positive state, um, your emotions when they are regulated properly, when you are conscientious and aware of your emotions and um, your emotional biases are as well. You're able to function on a higher level. Behavioral areas also affect your overall mental health. And of course the neurocognitive or your ability to, to think and do um, process information that's delivered to you. Excuse me. So, mental illness, which is on the opposite side of the um, spectrum, is a deficit or imbalance in one or all of these areas. <laughs> and essentially, in turn, they cause a ripple effect of maladaptive behaviors, behaviors, thoughts, moods, um, and function in a person's life. I'm sorry, I skipped ahead a little bit. So the emotional health piece is a state of balance, <clears throat> emotional regulation and functionality in a person's life. So basically what this would look like is secure and solid judgment, sound, um, standing on sound principles and, and logic and reason within the scope of one's cultural element or socioeconomic environment. Um, appropriate response to various life stimuli, appropriate level of reactivity um, to um, various things that may happen in a person's life. For example, um, passing a test or acing a final exam that seems to be extremely important to one's success and tenure, of course, and growth in life maybe graduating from high school, graduating from college, graduating from <clears throat> um, a professional school <clears throat> or something of that nature. Also, emotional reactivity to people who are close and intimate to that person going through these milestones in their lives as well. Uh, marriage, various life transitions. Um, also, adequate relationship building skills. Okay, so people who have relationships that wither along the way, for the most part, they suffer with maintaining and um, securing attachments in their lives. And normally, this is because they have some type of underlying mental or emotional illness. Um, either way, these are the definitive grounds of those issues that we will talk about today. <laughs> okay, so the element of this month's broadcast, of course, is going to be for you to become a vessel, for you to find out 
um, how you can encourage a person to get help. Um, if, if someone is close and near and dear to your heart, or even those people that are at a distance, sometimes we work with people, sometimes we see people in passing because essentially we're all systemically connected. And we notice that they are struggling with one or more issues surrounding around mental or emotional health issue matters. And we want to help. Encouraging someone to get help is one of the most difficult things to do because mental and emotional health matters. Behavior health in general um, is heavily stigmatized in the United States popular culture. And essentially people figure if you go to a psychotherapist or a psychologist for help or a psychiatrist, then there is something seriously wrong with you or you as a person aren't as productive as other people in society. Essentially, if a person is seeking help, if a person is seeking an outlet, this individual is focusing on improving not only their quality of life, but also the quality of the connections and the lives that are systemically connected to them. <clears throat> so this, this is something that definitely shouldn't be looked at um, in a sore light. So let's talk about the meat of this month's idea or topic of discussion. Um, encouraging someone to see a mental health practitioner requires that you be sensitive to time and location when you have whatever conversation it is you decide to initiate with that person. Um, because, of course, we know that responses to anything in life are based on the appropriation of time and, and place. People don't respond if you are telling them they need to seek you know, help from a professional in front of their entire family at their birthday party or um, at their wedding. Because these are just not the places to do it and that's just not the way to do it because now you've made a complete spectacle of um, not only that individual or their issue, but also of yourself because you've brought attention to um, their issue in a way that's not necessarily conducive of a person who is trying to bring positive and impactful change toward an individual that they care about. Okay, so the second area is to highlight positive behaviors and meaningful contribution. I selected this as the second step because you have to open up a conversation about and in um, anything that's stigmatized heavily with proper affect, proper attention, and proper praise to the positive attributes of a person. So you want to talk about, you know, how this person has been a huge impact on your life and on the lives of other people and talk about some of the community work that they, they have um done or participated in. Talk about some of the volunteer activities. Talk about some of the um, things they've done as a parent or as a daughter or <clears throat> another systemically connected family member. Talk about the way that they've impacted the lives of people around them. Um, this normally brings their attention um, to the forefront of the conversation and regardless of whatever uh, mental illness that they may have, they may have a low affect in general because of some underlying mental illness or um, issue that they have going on. However, they can definitely see this as, okay, this is something that I may wanna listen to. Where's this conversation going? So you've now drawn them in <clears throat> and they're ready to hear you out on whatever it is that you have to say. So you, I guess you could see it as um, the priming you know, for conversation. <clears throat> the next element I listed is be, be prepared for the deflection and denial attempts in advance. <sighs> Essentially, we know that the first step to um, rectifying an issue in our lives is what? Admitting that we have a problem. So when someone else is on the outside and they're noticing that we have some type of issue going on, then essentially we're going to do what? We're going to be in denial. 
oftentimes we we live our lives in denial every single day and we just find ways to cope and these ways may or may not be extremely maladaptive or non-conducive to our positive aspect and growth in life and essentially they prevent other things from being able to flourish in our lives and contribute also to the persistence of um, mental illness and emotional issues, okay? <laughs> so the way you prepare for the deflection and denial attempts is to highlight the um, symptomatic behaviors that you've noticed um, in this conversation, right after you've highlighted all of the positive affect or positive impact <clears throat> that these people have had on your life and the lives of others. You could do this, an example, I guess I could give you an overall example once we get through all of them. But the idea is to highlight these things, some of the symptoms you've seen that lead you to feel as if they do have um, a mental illness or emotional issue that they're struggling to deal with and maladaptively coping with. And um, talk about how you've seen them previously strive through various issues in life and this simply looks like it's not them or it's not becoming of who they are <clears throat> based on things that you know about them previously so the next um and the final one that i list is be willing to assist and be a continuous element of support this one is really important because essentially um you are in being a vessel you are extremely important to, to the process of them not only looking deep within themselves and discovering or acknowledging that they have this problem, but also to them following through. Oftentimes, people don't get help because they simply don't have the resources and they don't have the information, okay? So maybe you can give them information and insight and buy-in and help them do the research so that they can find a qualified practitioner who can help them through their issues. So if you remain readily available and you verbalize that, but I'm not, not only verbalize it, but stand by it by helping them through every single step, they're more likely to follow through because they're doing some work on their end, but you're also guiding them to um, tangible resources some of the time. So you can do that by sharing this video, liking and sharing this video with people in your network, regardless of whether where they are in their lives. You can do that by sharing other mental health topic material, subject material um, on your social media page or even magazine material that you may come across it's important that you share this information with every single um person that you can with every single social media outlet that you can with every person with every um perspective business with every avenue that you come in contact with because we are all linked in some way and Essentially, if we don't do these things, they say that we are not concerned about our tomorrow today. And we should very much be concerned about these matters. Um, so um, as they embark on their journey, even, you know, sometimes the road to healing can be extremely revealing. And what I like to tell my clients is that Rome was not, was not built in a day. Sometimes it takes us putting forth a significant amount of effort in order for us to have a great appreciation for some of the things that we end up accomplishing in life. Healing is one of those things, and it does take time. Essentially, we have to take our time and move through the various elements of um, discovery and uncovery. <laughs> in order to get to recovery, okay? So that's um, that piece. 
we'll delve into the next element, which is a word with Doc LQJ. This is the element of our advice column piece. And uh, normally I have my admin select the topic for us. I'll read off the content so you guys can kind of read or follow with me. <sighs> my wife and I have been married for 12 years and we have been separated now for seven months. I visited you for free consultation a while back. I love free consultations. I feel like they, they do the absolute most for people. They're like that awakening moment or something. And um, some people decide that, you know, they have enough with the limited advisement that I offer during their time. And then some people continue the journey and we, we start to uncover and unveil some great things in life and um, great insight that sites that lead to long-term change for their lives. Okay, so separated for seven months. Visiting for a free consultation a while back and I took care of us and started opening up a dialogue via regular phone calls with stress and turf <clears throat> Okay. What's an experience? Yeah. Um, so the part about amnesty based communication. Um there I have my own personal approach to the three keys to effective communication or whatever, conflict um conflict resolution management um course, sort of like this thing that I've put together. However, Imago Therapy has um, a very similar platform for couples. If you guys want to do a little bit of research, that could that could help. I believe they have a couple of videos on YouTube. Okay. willing to let go without disclosing the sexual relationship between she and I to my wife. My wife has been saying that she may give me another chance in the recent visits with her and I just know if I tell her about the situation she isn't going to want to come home to me. How can I come out of the side chick situation sexual relationship? <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> sexual relationship. I like that. Without losing my wife forever. Maybe my question is can you just start seeing me on the phone? Okay. Wow. Okay, so I think I vaguely remember this encounter for a consultation. Not quite sure if this is you or not, but Donnie K. I'm guessing it's the name that they use to um, protect the identity of our interesting viewer. <laughs> I first want to say thank you so much for the compliment. Um, they're greatly appreciated. But delving into the, the main piece of what you are asking, coming out of the side chick sexual relationship without losing your wife forever. Okay, so if you have consulted with me, it means that you understand that I am a very adamant individual overall and practitioner about full disclosure. And I really believe that there should be no real secrets kept between spouses or um, intimate partners who are in a committed relationship. So I will say this. Um, I'm not quite sure why, why it is that you didn't mention that you were involved sexually with another woman at some point, you know, before your wife um, decided to take you on dates. But um, jumping into it, I recommend that you have a comprehensive conversation, fluid conversation with your wife about everything. And you got to lay all of the cards out on the table. You know, and set it up and make it safe to communicate before you do this. That is definitely going to be my recommendation. 